Alright guys, welcome back to another tying video with O'Florida. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be tying an EP bait fish. First thing we're going to do is take our hook, secure it in the vise. And actually for this tie, before we get started, we're going to go ahead and just prep our material. Uh, it's a lot easier doing it this way rather than having to take the time to grab the material and deal with it. I'm going to use this little piece of wood with a little bit of velcro just right on top of it to help me out. First thing we're going to do is take our base color, take a small little pinch of material. This is very thin. Uh, there's probably around 30, 30 so strands in there. I'm just going to go ahead and press that there. I'm going to take my second part or my second clump of bottom material. This one I want it to be a little bit thinner but not much. I'm just going to go set that right below it and we're going to take our top colored material and in total we're going to have four clumps. As you can see how many fibers I'm grabbing here, there's not that many at all. Like I said, probably somewhere right around 30. It doesn't have to be exact though. You want them to be even though, as much as possible. And while we're working with this material, I'll kind of have you guys pull some out as we go. It'll make more sense when we get a little bit further into the tying of this fly. Right here I grabbed just a little bit too much. I'm going to go ahead and just place that back on the clump. You want it just to sit nice. And this is what we're going to be working with. I'm actually going to take my clump of a little bit bigger material in the first one, move it down here and my little bit bigger clump down here. So these two are going to be a tiny bit more full than these two top clumps. These are going to be for the head section. These are going to be for the bottom section or the tail section. I'm going to get this big material out of the way. And now we're ready to start actually tying. So let's jump onto the vise. And take your thread. This is mono thread so it's a little bit slippery. We're going to take it and we're going to start it a little bit behind the eye of the hook, maybe a full eye length back, and then we're going to wrap all the way to a little bit in front of the barb, or sorry, in front of the point. Go ahead and trim that. Add one or two. So as you can see, I just left a little bit of room there. We're going to take this bottom material. We're going to cut that in half, directly in half. And then with our fingers, we're going to kind of just uneven it uneven the tips just a little bit. If you get any super long flyers, you can pull them out. Like I said, super thin little piece. We're going to invert the hook, push the point through the middle section of the material, and we're going to tie that in right in the middle of this material with two or three just super loose securing wraps just to hold it on there for now. You can pull down a little bit just to make sure that it cinches up just to hold in place while you take the pressure off of your bobbin. We're going to repeat the same thing with the next tail material. Just go ahead and take it off there. If you could feel the same kind of density of fiber, you want it to be as close as possible as I said in thickness. So I'm going to tie in the top section now. Another two loose wraps. We're going to tie it directly in the middle. The first clump, as you can see, we tied in. Now we're going to take this forward two wraps, and we're also going to take it backwards two wraps. And then with your finger, we're going to just kind of pinch so the materials kind of fold around the hook. The whole point of this, we want to cover this side of the shank, and we want to cover this side of the shank. So it's totally okay to come in here grab the material and really manipulate it even if you have it tied in tight so you take your finger and you just kind of move that material and roll it on its side we kind of want to just cover the shank of the hook it doesn't have to be perfect you'll see as this fly goes it starts looking horrible but the finished product it gives you an incredible fly so after you kind of have that material just moved a little bit more around the hook your thread is going to end up as far back as possible and what that does is when you fold it over and back, getting that bottom piece to go around the hook, just basically hooking the material and pulling it around. Now your thread is behind, if you could see, 
where I want my fold in point to be. So when I tie it off, it's going to leave a little, a little bump over in the head. So I'm actually going to take my fingers before I tie this in and take my thread back over. Once I have that, we're going to take our thread and just do one full capture wrap. So we have a full capture on that. We're just going to turn the fly around and make sure we get nice even coverage all the way around the shank of the hook. As you can see, it's pretty covered, which is good. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it definitely helps in the look of the fly when it's finished. So do two or three wraps right on that front, super tight. So right here, if you want, you can get a little bit of hard as hole, and you can put a drop there. You don't really have to, but it is kind of worth it. Uh, next step, we're going to go ahead, take our second piece of bottom material. We're just going to do the same thing we did the first time. Kind of just make it a little bit more, uh, I don't know, untapered. And take that body material, invert our fly, go ahead and measure that out on the bottom, tie that in right in the middle. Nice two or three securing wraps just so it don't move around. It doesn't have to be tight just to hold it in place. That's what I mean by securing wraps. Same thing, repeat this process. We're going to go ahead and untaper the ends of the EP fiber. Like I said, we're going to pull a little bit out of this clump just to match the density of this first clump that I had. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and lay that right on the top of the shank of the hook. Spinning the bobbin helps a little bit trying to capture it with mono thread because if you take off tension, the thread likes to jump back. Tying with mono thread is a little tricky. We do have a video uh, called Tying with Thread Control it'll definitely help out in this fly. So feel free to go and watch that. All right, now that we have that tied in directly in the middle, we're gonna go ahead and pinch and kind of just roll our fingers back and forth. This just spreads the EP material on the top and the bottom. And then we're gonna go ahead and wrap back two or three, four wraps and get that nice coverage. As you can see on both sides of the shank of the hook, we got pretty decent coverage. And then we're gonna go ahead and fold these back. Like I said, the thread is going to be already in the back once you wrap forward and then back. Your thread's always going to be in the back. So when you fold this over, you're going to hook the middle of this bottom material, wrap it around the shank of the hook, and now we can pinch the head and make sure we capture everything. Nice two loose wraps. Now we can just go ahead, look around the whole shank of the hook, make sure we got pretty decent ever even coverage and if you don't just taking your fingers and pinching right around it really helps a lot we're going to take two three four nice securing tight wraps i know this doesn't look like much but i promise it is going to look a heck of a lot better once we get the next steps going actually you know what it's going to look bad until we trim the fly but that's okay we're going to come in here with our ep sparkle i like to just grab a little clump I take a pretty healthy clump and I just kind of pinch it between my fingers. I'll run it down, taking all the excess nasty stuff off. I kind of turn it over. This stuff is very hard to work with, especially if you have a fan on. I'll lay it directly in the middle and I'll kind of just spread it over the material. I don't like using too much flash. And now, as you can see, my fan's actually blowing. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to capture it, but I'm going to go ahead and spin my thread. Do one capture wrap, move it out of the way, do a second. I'm going to go ahead and just pull some out because I put a little bit too much. Personally, I don't like that much flash in my flies. This just gives it a nice little scale fall, I like to call it. So it just shimmers in the tail a little bit. As you can see, you just take your fingers and pull the loose ones out. As you fold it back, you can put two or three nice little tight wraps right on the head and then your flash is going to be blended in there pretty decently. I just like a little bit, not too, too crazy about a lot of flash in my flies. So next we got these two patches of material. These are going to be a tiny drop bit, uh, thinner than the other ones that we used the first time. 
we can go ahead and take our bottom color, cut three quarters down. So I actually cut a little bit too much. Ideally, I would have went a little bit shorter, but that's all right. We'll make it work for the video. So take that. You don't have to taper the ends here. I just kind of have a habit of doing it. I kind of like to twirl them in my hand, make it thin. I'm going to invert the fly. I'm going to go ahead, take this, put it underneath. I'm just going to take both hands and pull straight up. So basically making a V on the hook, taking my thread, and while pulling up, you're just going to keep pulling up all both clumps together in that one hand. And you don't want to tie it super tight where it lays all the way flat like this. That's not what you want. You don't want to keep wrapping all the way back. You actually want to leave it a little bit propped up. You'll see in the finished step why you want to do that. So just two, three wraps. Try not to build too much of a head here. It is pretty important to only put a few wraps on this part. You can take Sally Hansen hard as nails or hard as whole, which we recommend. A little bit stronger stuff. And put a tiny drop right at that head. We're going to take our next clump of head material. We're going to lay that right underneath the fly after we have it the right way. This is a little bit too thick, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I make it the same exact thickness as my bottom material again, just kind of knowing by feel. I'm going to repeat the same thing, just the other way. So making a V around, taking my material, and kind of just wrapping a few times where it's nice and propped up still. And then a couple nice tight wraps down. Do not put too many wraps. Like I said, if you don't have really good thread control pressure, you can totally use glue and it is totally acceptable. All right, once we get that, we're gonna cut our bottom material again. This is just gonna be another short piece. And this piece is probably only two, two inches long or so. We're going to go ahead and invert our fly and we're going to lay this right on the part that we tied in. So on the mono that we tied in, go ahead and do a capture wrap. Do two, three wraps. <clears throat> like I said, it's going to be right on that mono that we tied in. Going to leave that there while I, while I grab another piece. This is going to be the head material. Pull a little bit out again. And you drop more out, make it nice and even. We're going to go ahead and just lay that right on top. And this mono thread, always a little bit harder to work with mono thread, so patience is key. We are going to do two or three little wraps to hold it in. With our fingers, we're just going to take and pinch our material, making sure we get nice coverage on the top and the bottom. As you can see, you kind of get a little bit of the hook shank. That's totally fine. The eyes are going to cover it up really nicely. So, like I said, our thread's going to be moved to the back. We're going to take our top and bottom piece, and we're just going to go ahead and fold that back again. Really making sure now on this head part to get full coverage. So, pull back, two loose wraps. You can actually look after you have those two wraps, and just make sure you get nice coverage on both sides. You don't need... To do a lot of wraps backwards but you can put a few wraps up in the front don't worry about putting too many just don't put them too far backwards crushing the material this whole fly is based off of it standing up so you get a larger profile so once we get that we're gonna pull everything back <clears throat> we're gonna take our last bottom material same thing repeat the process and this is gonna be the last step of the material on the fly. I'm going to go ahead and put that around the shank of the hook. I like to spin my bobbin just because it's a little bit easier to work with. Go ahead and capture that. Do two, three wraps. Hold it in place. I'm actually going to just go ahead and cut this in half. I didn't quite use all that I needed there. All that I had there. I'm going to go ahead and peel that off again a little bit just to make sure it's even with the bottom color again and we can invert or fly place that on the top go all the way up to the front of the eye of the hook when we tie this in 
do two or three wraps right to our second material take our fingers make sure we got full coverage after we know we got a pretty decent coverage we can go ahead and fold these back take our fingers again put two or three loose or capturing wraps just make sure we got pretty decent coverage and now we could really cinch down on this mono thread and finish it off I put two wraps and I'll put two sets of three whip finishes right in the front and then make sure we pull nice and tight take our scissors and trim that out of there I know what you're thinking this fly looks absolutely horrible guess what it's gonna look really good in a minute we could take it off our vise take our fingers completely just fluff the heck out of the fly as you can see I like to pull up and out you want it to be a, like a pancake this thing looks absolutely terrible right that's okay don't worry if it looks like this you did a great job all right so watch this fly transform in two cuts all you have to do is come in from the top go ahead and trim it a little bit come in from the top again trim it a little bit I know what you're thinking it still looks terrible that's okay we're gonna put eyes and trim it for the final time and you will have one of the best little EP bait fishes that you've ever tied alright so we're gonna take our 930 second eyes a little bit of super glue gel put a nice healthy amount of glue I don't like going too too crazy but on this fly it is nice that the eyes don't really fall off I put a nice little glob and I just go ahead and put the eyes on covering right that big ball that we made with the two v-shaped tie-in points that's where we want to put our eyes so just a drop further back once we got them on there let those sit for just one second while they harden you can really put some pressure on those eyes just with your thumb making sure not to get your thumb stuck on the eye because that does happen once we have this all set we can come in here with our scissors for a final trim I like to trim really close to that hook point and I'll actually go right under the hook point in most situations and trim it up I like to touch the eye of the hook with the scissors and as you can see already this fly is looking a lot better than it was three minutes ago so do a top cut and then come in here underneath the point of the hook just trim a little bit from the sides if you put a little bit too much material and then that's basically it that's going to be the done fly the best part about this fly is it's super super easy to throw there's actually absolutely no material extra on this fly opposed to say big mullet flies that are known for big profiles that push a lot of water this thing does not it's just a big silhouette it's perfect off the beach tied in black and purple for the back country you can go absolutely crazy trimming this fly but in all reality as long as it has a smaller little bait fish profile it's probably gonna get eight uh, this is just a greater great all-around mangrove fly uh, you can tie it a tiny drop further back all you have to do is start the fly a little bit further back and if you want to add a weed guard on this just take some hard mono crimp it in the middle make a little V put it down and tie it in I like to add weed guards on about half of them that I tie just because throwing against mangroves throwing against really really skinny shallow water flats for redfish uh, it's nice to have a weed guard that's gonna be your done fly and I hope you enjoyed that video you can actually add a little bit of glue up here if you want the extra durability but if you don't that's it just go ahead and throw it and catch some fish as always we're glad that you watched this video we hoped it helped 
If you'd like to see more tying videos that we have, click on our YouTube channel to see the full lineup or head on over to our website, oldfloridafly.shop.com. As always, we offer free shipping anywhere in the U.S., and we hope to see you guys out on the water.